Hi, I'm Tom Coffing. I'm excited about speaking to you today at TEDx at Candor International School. It was 1884, Germany, small schoolhouse. Young boy was acting up and the teacher said, you, mister, are gonna be staying after class. You got what's called detention. After the class, the little boy, he was pretty scared. He was just in the second grade. She said, got a little assignment for you. I want you to count up all the numbers from one to a hundred. One plus two plus three plus four all the way to a hundred and if you get the answer wrong you'll be here all night. Do you understand me? When you get it right you're free to leave. She figured it'd take him a couple of hours so she started to walk up to the front of the room to clean things up when all of a sudden the little boy stood up grabbed his stuff, and he said, 5,050. She said, where do you think you're going? He goes, home. She goes, no, no, you're going down to the principal's office. That's where cheaters go. He goes, no, I, I didn't cheat. She goes, let's go. They walked down to the principal's officer. She explained to him what happened. He got it in 15 seconds. The principal said, son, we're going to have to discipline you. Look, you had to have cheated. He goes, no, 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 no. No, no, listen, I didn't cheat. I really didn't. And he goes, how's it possible you did that in 15 seconds? He goes, you know, I said to myself, you know, I do need to listen. I'm going to kind of punish myself. I'm going to challenge myself. And instead of going one plus two plus three, I said, I'm going to make it really hard on myself. I'm going to do the extremes. I said, one plus 100 is 101. Two plus 99 is 101. 3 plus 98 is 101. 4 plus 97 is 101. I multiplied 101 times 50. It's 5,050, I'm telling you. <laughs> and the principal and the teacher looked at each other and they looked down and said, Wow, go and get out of here. Go home. You see, Johann Gauss grew up to be a great mathematician. When I was growing up, all I cared about was sports. Math? Come on! I started wrestling in the 8th grade. It wasn't long until I was winning championships. My high school never had anyone placed at the state level in any sport. I was the first ever when I placed 4th in the state as a sophomore in wrestling, 3rd in the state as a junior, and 2nd in the state as a senior. I won 7 tournaments against collegiate wrestlers while I was still in high school. I got a full ride to the University of Arizona, placed third in the NCAA National Championship, was a two-time All-American, won Sophomore Athlete of the Year, and won two United States Olympic Trial Tournaments in 1980. The Japanese believe that once you master something, that you can master anything. I decided to master two extremes in business and vowed to become a great speaker and a great computer scientist. And if I could master both extremes, I could do everything in between. And you know what's crazy about it? They are on the opposite spectrums. And in the beginning, I wasn't that great at both. I had been a speech major in college. I graduated with a bachelor's degree. But that's just the beginning. I went to Toastmasters for 10 years where you give speeches twice a month. I went to every contest they had at the local, state, national level. I did acting classes. I did commercials, radio. I did stand-up comedy. Sometimes there were Seinfeld people there on the stage with me. So I really took the approach of, just like wrestling, go to tournaments, practice, do the push-ups, do the sit-ups, do the weights, get stronger physically, get stronger mentally. That's what I did on the speaking side. And you know what? I wasn't all that great at it because I was programming. I was a programmer in the 1980s. It was tough. I was doing assembly programming. We did Hollerith cards back then. It was a nightmare. I barely hung in there. And I just kept trying to get better and better and better. You know, I always was the dumbest kid in the smartest classes in those math classes. And I never felt smart for a day in my life. You know, and then one day, my first year of programming, and believe me, I did it for 10 years because I knew I needed to get in there and really fight through the pain, work hard, and get better at something, just like I did in wrestling. But after my first year, 
still feeling like I don't know anything. I had a mentor come to me and he said, you know, Tom, let me explain programming to you. And I go, okay. He says, you know, in programming, have you ever seen when they would play the birthday song when you were a little kid and you would follow the bouncing ball, happy birthday to you? And I go, yeah, who hasn't seen that? He goes, that's programming. You have a bouncing ball and instead of happy birthday to you, it goes to one line of code. Open the file. Read the first record. If this is the first time through, branch over to the printer. Start building the printing and the headers. Okay, after you get done with that, then process the record. The bouncing ball moves through the code, one bouncing ball at a time. And I thought, huh, that's really an interesting approach. You know, if you think about that, and that is what happens. Wouldn't this be a better way? I came in the next day. I drew a circle. I drew like a pizza. So it had a bunch of triangles right to the middle. And I go, what if you had programming with this concept? You have a bouncing ball right here in the middle center. And all it does is synchronize eight other bouncing balls and they could all go through their lines of code simultaneously. And then when they got back to the synchronizer, you were eight times as fast. Do the math. If you could get it working with eight bouncing balls in a synchronizer, then it would be easy to get 16 bouncing balls, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. You could one day have a million bouncing balls. He said, Tom, Jiminy Christmas. You know what? There's only one bouncing ball. That's the way it works. You see, you have electricity, and it's either on or off. Those are zeros or ones. You know what? Go back to your cube. You're new here. And I said, yeah. OK. Have you ever been told you weren't the brightest person in the room? And I go, yeah, a lot of times. Sorry about that. And I went back to my cube, and I programmed for five more years. And then one day, I was working for NCR, and they bought a company called Teradata. And my boss came in and said, listen, I want you to see this presentation. Listen, these people came up with something called parallel processing. Don't even talk to them, Tom. They're not even human. These people are the smartest people that maybe ever lived. And I go, oh, oh, wow. OK, I can't wait to go see this. I went to the presentation. <laughs> OK, <laughs> all right. And they said, listen, here's the way it works. People write their SQL, it comes into one processor. This processor is in charge of synchronizing and commanding all of the other processors. We started with eight of them. It then tells them what to do. Eight of them simultaneously go through their code, and they come back, and they're done with the answer set. And once we got that working, we got it working for 16, 32 of them, 64 of them. And I said, unbelievable, you know? But at that point in time, there were 200 people in the room. We were all listening to this. And so they explained it. People said, ah, I don't think it's going to work. And I said, oh, no. I actually raised my hand. I said, uh, this is absolutely going to work. This is the future of all computers. And people kind of laughed. They go, hey, Tom, how would you know? And I go, I've seen it. And they go, where? And I go, in my mind. Oh, they're still laughing. <laughs> all right. These people are still laughing to this day. This makes sense mathematically, and this is going to be thousands of times faster. And everybody else left the room except for me. And I said, you know what? I want to do this. And I built my career around this. And everything I had said that this would be the future of computing for the next 30 years, that PCs would one day use this technology, all came true. And while everybody else missed the boat, I was the first to do it the first to teach it. I've taught over a thousand classes around the world. India, China, Africa, throughout Europe, throughout the United States, Canada, Mexico. I've written 85 books. First book was 100 pages. It took two years. It's like a paragraph a day. But you fight through things and you learn as you go. And the next thing you know, I had the book done. Then I wrote another book with a friend of mine, Mike Larkins. It took us two years to write an SQL book. After that, I wrote four books in two months. 
The last month, I stayed up 20 hours a day working constantly for 30 straight days. The wrestling taught me how to be tough, how to not quit. Most people couldn't have done it, and most people can't write a book. Written 85, takes me about a week now. So really my message is, as you take on things, you're going to get better, and you need to have faith in yourself. You need to see the opportunities, but it was the analytical mind that said, wait a minute, mathematically, this is how programming's gonna work. And it's gonna change the way you're gonna see computers because they solve so many things. The analytics of cumulative sum, moving sum, moving ag averages, uh, regression, linear regression, moving differences, ranks, row numbers, allow customers in business to see every aspect of what has happened over the past 10 years in their business so they can merely see the future and make better business decisions. Don't go out there and find yourself. Create yourself. You want to be successful? Understand that just like wrestling, the push-ups, the sit-ups, the getting in shape, the mental shape, the going to practice, the looking at the films, the analyze, the practice over and over, you just grow until you can be great. But you know what? Everybody there wasn't the greatest athlete, but they were good athletes. The great computer scientists out there, they weren't the best in their math classes. I wasn't, for sure but we were taking some pretty intense math courses and we really had the fundamentals that showed we could think, we could analyze, we could solve problems. And because of that, I was able to eventually become a great teacher because my speaking and my computer background came together and it was the greatest time of my life because I've had so much influence, been able to bring so much positive not just to myself and my family, but I just am so thrilled that I've been able to help so many people grow in this business. And I'm hoping that you're gonna remember that the only person that needs to believe in you is you. <music>